everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm Grandmaster Magesh Panchanathan. Welcome to Proches Training Freshers Group. So we will be working on, I mean, this is our demo class, as you all understand. Uh, so basically, I have a few things that I'm going to show you, which is going to reflect probably what we'll be doing through the through the course itself. So you'll have a good idea of how you'll be learning in this class, how you'll be learning in this course and stuff like that. <clears throat> okay. So I have a game, one of my favorite games, and I'm going to show you that game first. And then of course I have some um, examples. We did this a little bit in the YouTube stream too. I'm going to give you positions um, from games. And usually I'll ask you to guess the tactic. I would say, you know, find the best move. Instead, we can do it a slightly different way. We can try to find the move that was played in the game, which is usually not the best sometimes. <laughs> and then that might lead to some disaster. So we'll guess that too, okay? So, <clears throat> fantastic. Let's go ahead and get started. So we do have a classroom today. Um, I'm going to put it in chat. Uh, looks like we have uh, one she's already put it in chat click on it you will have to put in your name and it'll ask you for an email but it'll let you in as long as you put any email that says at some email.com if you want to give your own email you can but it's as long as you put any email it will let you in so get on to the uh, board i'll be sharing my screen also in a second All right, I'll give it a couple of minutes for all of you to join in. And um, I'll just establish a couple of simple rules. Of course, I think most of you are familiar with this. You can stay on mute through the class and um, I don't mind having some interaction. So at some point, if you have a question, raise your hand. If it's possible, I'll talk to you. Um, maybe I can ask you some questions and you can um, you can answer. Or if you have some observations, we can try to. Um, so we'll, we'll try to get that going within this itself, okay? All right, so I hope all of us have joined in. Let me see. Yep, I see a bunch of names in here already. All right, let me go ahead and screen share and we can go ahead and get started. That's a little off. So. Okay, that should be better. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So my game I wanna show you is one of my favorite players. And he was not a world champion, but amazing player. Let's take a guess. Let's see what kind of names I get. You can put it in chat. Who do you think would be an amazing player to learn from? And who was not, who's never a world champion, not because he was not good. It's a uh, small clues only, only because there were no world championships at that time. That's my clue. Aishani got it right. By the way, give me the answers in the Zoom chat. I don't look at the chat in the Chessland classroom, so just communicate with me in Zoom. Amaze says Paul Keres. That's a really good guess. But when Paul Keres was around, um, there were World Championship matches. Unfortunately, Keres did not end up winning. Akhil, you're right. Got it right. It is Paul Morphy, and he's one of my favorites. And um, I can show you like probably a bunch of his games. Uh, all of his games are usually very very instructive sometimes he is a little over the board where he tries to attack he loved to attack but there are three reasons why i really like these games he played the rook cards game you're right in fact that's one of my favorite games Akil. 
he he drags his opponent's king from e8 and if i remember right he gets checkmated somewhere on d1 or something like that right was it on d1 or b1 um it's an amazing game by the way if you guys have not seen that you should check it out too he's played actually lots of odd odds because paul morphy was so good at his time he felt it was not fair to play an even game so if somebody challenged him he basically wanted to have an odds kind of match and he felt that's the only way the game would be fair he was that good um anyway so this one was interestingly uh morphy was his morphy so white was paul morphy black was alonzo morphy i believe he was his uncle um uh, if i'm right i'm not going to quote on that because i'm not 100% sure but that's what i think he is okay now let's get going and it's also one of the openings that i you know um i really like to show because it's very very uh, important to learn the concept now i'm assuming all of you in this group know the basics of the openings right so we develop our pieces we control the center we castle right so these are simple rules develop control uh, develop your pieces control the center and you castle these are uh, for the king safety and of course while you're doing all of this you keep your pieces safe this is kind of basics and i hope most of you are familiar with this if you're playing your games you're not playing moves like knight a3 and knight h3 hopefully yeah always coming towards the center so let's see this e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop to actually before i play here there are lots of different options here let's see how much stuff you guys know so in chat tell me what are all the options for white you can tell me a move you can tell me name of an opening whatever is comfortable for you but white has multiple options with different openings here let's see what you guys know let's start with that okay english is as italian game evans gambit ruy lopez nice bishop c4 bishop b5 and d4 ishani okay italian spanish scotch um very nice very nice i think you all know your main openings i'm saying bishop b5 bishop c4 d4 g3 and knight c3 i was probably not looking at g3 as one of the mainstream lines but <laughs> not bad okay i think um that's pretty good we have bishop c4 the italian game we have bishop b5 the ruy lopez we have d4 which takes us into scotch we have knight c3 which is usually going into some four knights kind of opening so you have lots and lots of options here right um now the regular developing lines not so dangerous but the ones in which your opponent gives you material that is dangerous yeah so bishop to c4 is what we're going to look at and i think um oh g3 yes i think g3 is pop i i have seen g3 more recently am i i agree with you i just have not uh, i mean i didn't consider that as one of the main line opening of course when i asked the question though yes um lots of top players on and himself played it yeah so <laughs> yeah so bishop to um c4 again um this is the italian now black usually has a couple of main responses knight f6 and bishop c5 and uh, bishop to c5 was played in this game now i think akil you suggested um name of an opening what is the move for that opening can you tell me yeah okay you can type it in chat of course yeah so or if anyone else knows a gambit in this position akil that's right anyone else do we have a gambit evans gambit aishani right b4 yeah very good watch so b4 is the move that we want to look at today in, the, in this morphy's game morphy played b4 and um first i would like to know why is white offering a free pawn yeah very simple discussion yeah i mean it's it's just a free pawn i can take with the knight or the bishop i can see the re reasoning maybe behind the knight captures it's possible that this might be hanging um but you know yeah i think this might this should hang because i can take on f7 yeah so that should be pretty straightforward um what's the reasoning behind this right to distract the bishop from attacking d4 well that's one of the reasons i shani that is definitely one so you can gain more control here but usually gambits are played for two reason two reasons one is time tempo right so i want to play d4 here what can i do to play d4 i can play c3 i can play d4 that will take me two moves yeah so this is one of the normal openings by the way not d3 c3 is a very normal way to play here and then black would play some developing move and then at some point d4 can happen right away or later this is all just normal opening yeah but what if white says i want to play two moves together instead i will give you a free pawn that's the kind of exchange 
happens with the gambit. So basically you trade off time for material, right? You're going to be fast, you're going to be attacking and your opponent might not be ready. So watch this when B4 happens, I'm giving you a free pawn. But now I got this move with the tempo. For those who don't know what a tempo is, it's basically um, an attacking move that gains time, right? So for example, if I play any random move here, Black would typically want to develop one of his pieces or try to castle. This is what Black would want to do. But when I play C3, I'm, I'm putting pressure on this bishop and I'm saying you cannot do anything that you want to do. Instead, you have to move this bishop. So I gain time. I, I played a move that I wanted to play. My opponent is forced to play a move that they don't want to play. Yeah, That's a simple explanation for this tempo. So now the bishop needs to move back and then I get to play D4 as if I played it in one move because I gave B4 as a free pawn. Yeah, So exchange for material and time. Let's start with the first question. I like to, of course, in chess lang, you're all probably used to the questions. Now I'm going to ask a question and uh, it will pop up on your board and you will be able to make an answer. So first question is, where would this bishop go? Where do you think is a good square for the bishop? Um, actually, there are multiple ones here. Actually, yeah, maybe this is not a good place for me to ask a question. I know you're going to give me multiple moves. Particularly recently, I, I see a lot of other moves that are coming in. I'm not a big fan of bishop c5 because it immediately gives a tempo. That's what happened in the game. Uh, I think this is probably what you want to play, bishop a5. And uh, there's, I think, recently some bishop e7 moves also being played. But it's, I'm not a big fan of this. I mean, I think the simplest thing is to play bishop a5. The bishop will come to b6 at some point. Uh, it's keeping an eye on this diagonal. So d4, uh, pawn takes, I cannot immediately take back. So I would probably go to a5. That's the move I would like, okay? Um, let's see what happened in the game. So this is another perfect example of how you need to study your gambits or play against them. If somebody comes and plays a new opening against you, let's say I'm playing the London, you have not studied. It's okay, you can manage, you know, because the best thing you have to do is follow your logic. Control the center, develop your pieces and castle, and you'll be fine. Somebody plays the Evans Gambit against you, you're most likely not going to get away with control the center, <laughs> develop your pieces and castle, because you need to know exactly how to defend against this gambit. So let's let's continue. Yeah, after bishop c5, d4 was played. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, now Morphy has total control of the center. Pawn captures d4, pawn captures d4, and bishop b6 was played. Right. Um, from here, maybe you will guess Morphy's Paul Morphy's move. Okay. Uh, even if you don't get the exact move right, that's okay. But I want to see if, how many of you can guess. Um, oh, I have to pause the share and then ask the question. Okay. All right. The first question for the day. I think it also is very apt. You will have 60 seconds to make a move. Now, remember this. You can have multiple attempts, but I don't like too many attempts. So I'm going to give you, let's say, three attempts. Anything more than three, we don't get points. All right. Make your move. I'll tell you, it's one of the rules of about of the opening that we talked about. One of the rules about opening. Sharvent and Aishani. Sharvent got in one attempt. Aishani two. Akhil, first attempt. Sumeda, first attempt. Nice. One of the most natural moves. That's my clue. But I'll, I'll show you uh, something about Bishop AFA as well after we do this. I just remember this. All right, time is up. I see a few of you got in one attempt. Some of you took more than one. And it's not necessarily wrong if you play a move like Knight C3 um, or, you know, Bishop B2, Bishop A3. Some of these developing moves, I wouldn't consider them like really bad, bad. But I think the most logical one is to castle. Your king is in the center. It's exposed along the diagonal, right? And you don't really want to, um, you know, leave the king too much in the center. So simple move, castle. That's what Morphy did. And after knight to a5. Now, again, Black's idea is, okay, he wants to bring knight f6. Uh, but what might knight f6 run into? Who can give me a suggestion? If, if Black plays the most natural developing move, 
what will black face? Vineet, you're right. Ashani, good. So this is one of the reasons these gambits work. Knight C, queen C3, uh, knight C3 and knight G5, okay. Well, by the way, rest of you are giving me E5, correct, yeah. I think, Amma, you're giving me a different position. The reason why uh, this move becomes dangerous in these gambits is because the E5 pawn is gone, and I will always get to play E5. And this is a problem, yeah? And now the knight needs to run again. And not only that, I, I just gain more space. And then I'm going to come more, come more in with my attack, and you'll be in serious trouble. So in situations like this, black usually wants to do this and then play knight f6, right, to avoid this e5. In fact, even then e5 is possible. So, but in this case, I think black is more worried about this move. Basically, he's worried about something like this or something like this. So there's a lot of attack on f7 that's possible, and he realizes everything is coming with the bishop, so he played knight a5, yeah? So, uh, okay, now the bishop has to get out of the diagonal, and, um, Morphe played bishop d3, basically, yeah? Again, the center is there, and the position is wide open, so you don't want to lose your bishop. You want to keep your bishop. So after bishop d3, d5 was played. First question is, what do you guys think? Good move, bad move, or neutral move? You can give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, or neutral. It could be a normal developing move. It could be a normal center control move. It could be a great move, or it could be a bad move. What do you guys think? Vishwad gives me a thumbs up, okay. Sharvan says, nope, bad move. Anyone else? Okay, a lot of bad moves. Can anyone who says bad move, if you want to explain your answer, you can raise your hand. If you want to talk and tell me why your move, um, this move is bad. Okay, Niv says he wants to go on Niv. Uh, because the king is so open, then the rook can come. He even then check the king like that. The king will be attacked. Then Thank you. <laughs> well said, yeah? So the simplest mistake you can make, make is to open the center when your king is in the center, right? This is even more of a problem because white is also castle. If white's king was here, at least I would say um, it's it's a reasonable way to play it because both kings would be open. But white is just castled and black is not castled with the king in the middle. D5 is just really not a logical move, yeah? E5 is more space, am I? But I think you should think about really opening up, right? So at this point, you really want to expose this king and attack it. Your opponent is giving you a chance to open it up. So obviously, Paul Morphy chose pawn takes d5. I realized I could have asked this as a question, but <laughs> that's okay. After queen captures d5, I think, again, there are multiple moves here. Um, so I'm not going to ask this as a question because you can play rook e1, maybe knight c3. Um, Morphy played bishop a3. A very nice developing move, and he's saying you cannot castle short. Right, keeping that in mind. All right, now uh, black decides, okay, I want to maybe castle long. So bishop e6 was played. So now the next two moves, I'm going to guess, I'm going to ask questions one move after another. Remember this, that if black castles, I mean, white can still attack, white still has some initiative, but king is safe. I mean, it would be much nicer to really attack this king right here in the center, yeah? So let's see, you can get, the next two questions back to back, right? I'm going to pause to share. All right, first question is up. What do you think Paul Murphy played here? Again, stick to simple, basic opening rules and you will get it right. Try to get it in only one attempt. <coughs>
Right, Prahlad, that's correct. Nev, I'm not a big fan of that move that you typed in chat. I mean, it's possible to play that, but I don't think you're really achieving much with that move because you have to look for your opponent's response, yeah? Okay, so time is up. Looks like um, some of you have it. I see Vansh, Vinod, San, Ame, and there is someone who has no name. All have it. So the idea is very simple. We talked about tempo, right? And you, you need, we also talked about development. And this is coming together, and this is a no-brainer. You have to play Knight C3. Now, let's see. Queen A4 check was suggested, but I, I can play C6, and I don't see why that is such a big deal, yeah? Um, I can also maybe try Knight C6, but Pawn C6 seems like a better option, yeah? Um, anything else? You can play Rookie 1, yeah. Like, lots of possible moves, but I am going to Castle. And remember that. Tempo is all about that, right? When you create a threat, you do not let your opponent do what they want to do. Instead, react to your threat. So, Knight C3 is a simple move. Develop your Knight. Attack the Queen in the center, right? And now... All of your pieces are developed. So this is one of the reasons I love Morphe's games. And this is something very, very important for everyone in this classroom. If you want to win games, you have to use your pieces. If you don't coordinate your pieces, you cannot win games. Maybe 300 years ago, when Greco was playing, you could just move your queen and knight and try to checkmate. Or in my very first tournament, um, believe it or not, I won most of my games with scholars made. I brought my queen out. I brought my bishop out. I checkmated. And I went back thinking chess is so easy because I can win all my games and I'm too good. <laughs> well, of course, it doesn't work like that all the time. So if you want to win games, the basic rule is you have to coordinate your pieces and use all of them. Don't attack with two or three pieces. Use all your pieces, right? So very strong move. Now, again, black cannot castle and has to react to the queen threat and black move queen back. Let's see who can guess the next move. I think this is the most critical move in the game. Again, I'm going to let you know that black is going to castle. Okay. Um, I have a feeling two moves might come to your mind here, but one of them is clearly the move that is going to target the king. That's my clue. Okay. Eventually, the king needs to open up and you need to attack. Once you're right in guessing the two moves, but so you have to pick one out of the two. All right. Here comes the question. Let's make this a 20-point question. You can jump to the lead right now. But I'm going to give you also 90 seconds. And I'm also going to give you only two attempts. So you got 90 seconds. So take your time. Do not rush into this. I see a lot of you are thinking along the right lines. But take your time. There's no rush. Think about your move. Look at... Um, think about the follow-up and then decide. Ame has it in one attempt. By the way, if anyone is able to find this move very quickly, we might also be um, at a slightly higher level than this group. <laughs> All right, let's see, last 10 seconds. That's time, yeah? So I see Vansh and Amai got it right. Good job. The rest of you, you got it right, probably with multiple attempts. Not bad. Not bad. Let's resume share. Okay. So let's talk about this. Some of you played knight e5. Again, I think that is the move that I was saying is very tempting also because you're not letting black castle and you're attacking the queen. So um, I don't think it's a bad move. Not so sure if black can take this. 
I mean, you might still have some kind of interesting ideas after this, C6 maybe. Uh, but the thing is, it's not so clear. The move that you see that Morphe played, you will see that is very, very clear. D5. Now remember, this bishop is the only reason this king is surviving. Otherwise, rook e1 would just kill the position, yeah? So d5 makes a lot of sense because, again, you are valuing attack and your peace activity over pawn. Because this is actually a pawn that you're losing. There, is, there are two attackers and one defender, so that's just a free pawn. But you don't mind losing it because you want to expose the king. And also, you don't want to give your opponent the time to cast. Now, uh, black played bishop takes d5. Let's see what you guys play here. Let's see. Oh, I keep doing this before I pause my share. Okay. All right. Let's see if you guys can actually play Morphe's move. Hopefully, you will and not fall for any tricks. So, because there are some, this is simple, I'm only going to give you one shot. So, if you do anything more than one shot, you get zero points for it. Punch and Ame are acing this. I like it. Well, you can play a lot of um, you can play a lot of moves, but remember that uh, your opponent has options too. So, Miv, you have to think about what your opponent might do, and you have to be ready for that too. So, your move looks good, but I think your opponent has a good response. Aishani has it. Vinod has it in two attempts. Okay, I see a lot of you are getting it in two or three attempts. Prahlad. Yep, Prahlad, I like that. I like where you're going with this. Last five seconds. By the way, if you just joined the, joined the Zoom call, make sure you're on the classroom. We have a classroom for chess slang where you can actually answer questions to what I'm talking about here. Yeah? All right. Perfect. We got the answers here. So let's see who fell for my trick. <laughs> the reason I ask question here is because a lot of you get too excited and want to play rookie one check. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you've done the hard work. You've got the bishop out of the way. So, oh, my, my lucky day. Let's go. The problem is you do this. I go right back. You go bishop e5. I play c6. Okay, then maybe you can play knight takes d5. It's probably not, not a bad idea at all. But the point is you have to take the bishop. You have to take that bishop. Only then your rookie one idea will be effective. Yeah? So you cannot play this move and allow bishop e6. Then the hard work you put in to give up the free pawn is kind of gone now. Yeah? Because I took the pawn and I kind of gave back, came back. And I'm still protecting my king. So this is a good example of, you know, not being impulsive, you have to think about your opponent's response. You have plenty of good moves, or they look like good moves until you see your opponent's response. So Morphe, of course, played the simple move. Knight takes d5. Get rid of the bishop. Rook e1 check will become extremely, extremely powerful. So after queen takes... Um, okay, so I'm not going to ask this as a question because I know you're all going to play rook e1, and I know rook e1 is actually winning too. So it would be unfair for me to give you this question and, and say it's wrong if rookie one is played. Um, in Morphe slightly switched to the order and he played bishop b5 check. It's pretty cool because he's basically clearing the file. Like rookie one check, the only thing black can do is to go somewhere like this. Because f8 is guarded, there's no 87, yeah? So to be more efficient, Morphe starts with bishop b5 check. And now I cannot play c6 because queen takes d5 is hanging. So this queen is hanging. So the only move black can do to save both the king and the queen is I have to go take queen b5. But in that process, this is gone. So the king cannot go here. The king cannot go here. So rook e1 check becomes 10 times stronger than what it was. Yeah. The only move was played, knight e7. Rook takes e7 check. Ooh. I gave it away. No, I was going to ask this question. I thought he played this after rookie seven check. My bad. <laughs> My favorite move of the game, which is not easy to guess. I kind of gave it away. Okay. So the point is, let me ask you a question. What will you think about doing it? You can type in chat. You played rookie seven check. The king has to go to f8. What will be your first move that comes to your mind? Very nice. I think once you put it to everyone. <laughs> 
Vineet, correct. That's the move. So rook e5 check, what comes to our mind? We see discovered check, we want to win material, yeah? Fair enough. What's the problem? Why can't we, why, why can't Morphe simply play rook e5 and win the game? Why didn't he do it? We need bishop c5, I'll play rook takes c5 and I'll just win more material. So why is rook e5 exactly not working? I mean, technically I cannot call it not working. I'm sure rook e5 is still winning, but you're not going to win the queen, I can tell you that much. Prahala, good job, yeah? So you have a double attack on me. Vineet, I think you have the notation wrong, but I think you have the answer correct. You do what we call as a discover check. If you don't know what a discover check is, this is the discover check. I moved a piece and that piece is not checking. The rook on e5 is not checking the king. It's far away from it, but something behind is checking. So what this means is the piece that moved has so much more flexibility to do whatever it wants. Like in this case, I want to just go take your queen. But then of course, you do a double attack, I will do a double block. <laughs> so you cannot take this or you cannot take this. So that's kind of nice, yeah? Cool double block on c5. So after uh, this, you don't have an exact way to completely win the game. And that's why this kind of move comes in handy. So for some reason, I thought the move order was Morphe played rook e7 and then played rook b1. But it looks like, yeah, he played rook b1 first, yeah? Again, the beauty of Paul Morphe's play. He has a strong bishop, a strong knight, a strong rook, and a strong queen too, which is kind of open. And he doesn't want to use any of those pieces. He wants to use his weak piece and make it strong. A, a beautiful coordination of pieces. Now, the queen has nowhere to go because if I go to some random square, you will take and then you will discover check me this time. So let's say I go to h5. Now this will totally work because you will go rook e5 check and now there's no double block on this. And it's game over, yeah? So after rook b1, basically black went into hiding. Black said queen a6. So rook takes e7 check, king f8. So here I'm going to ask a question. This is completely winning for white. You can probably play a dozen moves to win the game. But I want you to go for the kill, which means I want you to try to finish the game. I know not grabbing everything that is coming along your way. Um, like I said, there's a lot of good moves, but I want you to go for the kill. Let's see, that's your clue. With that, let's see if you can guess what Paul Morphy did. So for this, maybe I'll give you two attempts. And I think 60 seconds should do the job. I mean, we give 60 seconds sometimes here, but we can also add more time depending on how the group is. For example, today I'm not exactly familiar with all your levels, but I'm kind of getting an idea based on your answers. So Sriram, I like where you're going with that. Prahlad, I like your idea. All right, last five seconds. All right, time up. Uh, I don't know if the leaderboard got updated. Somehow I don't see anyone getting it. Is that possible? No one got this right? I'm hoping some of you got it right. I'm hoping there is some kind of glitch in here. Um, but because I do see in chat, some of you have given me the best idea, right? Again, I know you're all kind of interested in moving the rook and checking the king. I know you can win stuff. You can play, for example, rook d7. I'll move the king back to d8. Uh, sorry, e8. Or actually, rook d7, I can also play c5 because the bishop will guard d8. Um, but yeah, Morphe's move, very strong, queen d5. 
again um, this is another very important top like thing that i want you to remember sometimes you have a good card you don't need to cash in yeah that's good that's what you have and you can use it for the best purpose and you don't need to immediately say i will use that discover check and i've seen this way too many times with my students like oh i got this beautiful pen i'm going to do something with it well maybe you don't have anything yet or i have this beautiful discover check like this one i have to do something with it you don't have to right you're quietly setting up other threats you're threatening mate and uh, while they're defending the mate you will also be having this discover okay all right we're going to finish it off with the last two moves at this point it's a mate in two how about queen d7 amma is asking queen d7 let's check queen d7 i'm sure queen d7 is also pretty good yeah yeah amma i would say seems like it's equally strong the only difference is you are threatening mate after multiple moves let's say if let's see five you have one two and a three move checkmate queen d5 which is paul morphy's move was threatening mate in one move so that would be my justification of queen d5 so last um question for this game it's a checkmate in two and it's a cool finish let's see how many of you can get it only one attempt and i'm going to give you two minutes so take your time there's no rush i want all of you to get this right so let's say 20 points for this one also or actually yeah 20 points and you will get only let's say one attempt Well, the first move is kind of obvious, you know. So I think most of you will do that. Okay, now I'm getting your answers. Ishani got it. Good job, Ishani. One, Shin Sri Ram. First move on the right track. Okay, you got the second one as well. Good job. I like it. The minute I say checkmate, everyone gets in one attempt. <laughs> we want checkmates we want to keep doing checkmates vineet rakesh vinod shani may want all in one attempt so i like one attempt i like it vishrut two and if any any one of you have any basic questions feel free to ask remember this no question is too basic the only thing we assume in this class is that you know the rules of the game and you have played some practice and you have played some games so if you feel like your level is a little um difficult to follow or if you think that something is a little tricky feel free to put it in chat so i'll be happy to explain that all right we have about 30 seconds left correct you know that that's other variation i didn't ask that as a question but that is definitely the other variation well i think you wrote your notation wrong but that is correct okay time is up so good job on the finish if you got it right it's a double check double check mate so i like it <laughs> each move is a double check for those who don't know what a double check is this will be one check but when i play this i am checking the king with two different pieces so the king has nothing better to do but move in a double check you cannot take one of the pieces because other one will still be attacking the king you cannot block one of the pieces because other one will still be attacking the king so i really have to move yeah rook b1 yes rook b1 is possible it's not forcing much so i mean when there is a check and checkmate you should definitely do that because when you play a non checking move you just have to then start thinking what are all the possibilities from my opponent and then you have to figure out i you know is there anything so in this case there's nothing but there could be right uh, so okay the king goes to e8 then queen d7 is made so let me just play that on the board that would be simple if the king goes to g8 and now of course the queen is hanging so if you try to do some regular kind of check maybe you will just lose your queen and rook f8 is a double check 
right? Actually, trust me, I've seen this so many times. Somebody has a checkmate in one and makes a blunder, something like rook f6 taking checkmate and then loses the queen and loses the game. <laughs> I have unfortunately seen too many of this, which is not what we want to do, yeah? All right, rook f8 is checkmate. So this is, like I said, a good example of so many things, right? What did we learn from this? Development, Morphy developed all his pieces. We learned about a gambit. He gave up a pawn, Evans' gambit, on b4 and tried to capture the center and develop faster by giving up the pawn with tempo, right? What else did we do? Uh, we coordinated all our pieces. So Morphy made sure every single piece was doing something, right? Even the rook on a1, which didn't look like it had anything to do with the game, but Morphy found some use for that rook too, right? And lastly, Morphy loves to attack. He loves to go for the king when he is ready. So first thing is you get ready. The next thing is you go strike. And he was really good at that. And you can see that with the end, with the beautiful double check checkmate, yeah? And uh, yep, importance of king safety. We learned how d5 was a bad move when your king is in the center for black, you should not open the center, yeah? Now, uh, while I have you here, I will also show you, I'll go back to the main position, uh, starting position. So we saw the Evans Gambit for d4. So I, I told you that this is probably a better uh, version to play, correct? Yeah. So I just want to show you something very quickly here. And there's a funny story also, yeah? And so now white has a couple of ideas. I can play queen b3 and just like, you know, try to put some pressure on the pawn. I can play d4, right? So let's say d4, I'll show you d4. And uh, okay, pawn captures d4, white will simply castle. It'll look like black is winning more and more pawns, but white is simply getting much faster with the attack. I would not recommend pawn grabbing. Nope. <laughs> Don't do that. You'll be in trouble. So let's say pawn to d6 is, is what you want to play. You want to keep things together. Uh, so before I ask this question, so I'll tell you, I used to have this discussion with my students. So this was to, if ever there was an imposter who looks just like me and claims that they're Grandmaster Magesh Panchanathan, what do we do? How do you know? How do you tell the difference? So we tried to come up with code words. We said, you know what? We'll use words, we'll use songs. And then we were not happy with any of that. So my students decided that the best thing to do is to give me a chess puzzle. What are the chances someone's gonna look like me and also be a grandmaster, right? So we were like, okay, cool. If somebody ever is afraid that there's an imposter, then you're going to ask a chess question to me, yeah? And uh, so I was making fun thing that someday I might not be in a good, was it like good thinking time and I might not get it right. Yeah. And something like that happened in this one. I kind of failed my own imposter test with my students. So I'm going to ask that to see if you guys can catch me also. So here queen b3 attacks the pawn and black kind of has two ways to save the pawn. You can play queen d7 or queen e7. And I was showing this in class and I completely forgot why queen d7 is the correct move. I was like, why, why is queen d7 the correct move? Why can't black not play queen e7 and save this pawn? And I couldn't tell. I forgot. So let's see if this class can beat my imposter theory. <laughs> so knight g5 is being suggested. Not bad, but if you play knight g5, I will play knight h6. This is not that straightforward. It's still a tactic. It takes two moves. That's the hint. Two moves. Prahlad, I like your first move, but you need to come up with a follow-up, yeah? What is your follow-up? Akil, I think this is too much. If you go bishop f7, I'll take. I don't see what the follow-up is. You want to go attacking, you want to sacrifice, but you have to be a little careful. Bishop g5, not bad, but I have probably knight f6. So... How about this? I'm going to ask this question in, uh, actually, no, I think some of you are still thinking and it's not that straightforward. So I'll not ask this question. So these are the moves I've gotten. So for knight to g5, yes, knight to g5 is possible. I'm going to go knight at six. Bishop a3 is not strong enough here. So let me give you something, okay? Let's go and find this in a very simple, methodical way. First, you have some information that you will not have during a game. That is, this position is winning for white. We know queen e7 is wrong. 
you will not have this information during a game. Nobody will tell you your opponent blundered. You will have to figure it out on your own. But the good thing in class is we are here to tell you. So the only type of moves I want to see are checks, captures, or threats. So how, how about you all give me some candidate moves? So we found one check, but it seems too much. Again, no move is a bad move just because it's dropping material. It's only bad if there is no follow-up. Remember that. If you think I'm losing a bishop so it's a bad move, then you will never find a good sacrifice. But you have to say, okay, I can do all of these moves. Is there a follow-up? Bishop f7, queen f7, where is the follow-up? Not much. g4 is too slow. Your move has to be a check, capture, or a threat. So give me candidate moves. Queen a4 is definitely a candidate move because you're kind of pinning my knight and you have a threat. d5 is attacking the knight, so it is a threat, candidate move. What else? d takes e5 is a capture, would be a candidate move, agreed. What else? Any other candidate moves? I think queen b5 will also be in similar um, idea. Bishop b5 also in similar idea, fair enough. There is a6, you're right. Bishop b5 or queen b5, definitely there is a6. You have to watch out for a6. You're 100% right. Bishop b5 may be still a6. We'll allow bishop takes e6, but um, possible. That's also possible. So here's the trick. Now you have to calculate two moves. It's not too hard, but you have to think for the second move, right? Now, First move calculation is easy, like after you get trained, of course, after you see that for some time, you'll realize, okay, if I capture this, am I winning something? If I attack this, am I winning something, right? If I attack, if I go here, am I winning something? If I go knight g5, am I winning something? These are all the first move calculations. But now I want you to go to the second move. So for example, if I play knight g5, this knight comes to h6, can you do something after that? If I play bishop f7, queen captures f7, can you do something after that? If you play d5, the knight will move somewhere. Can you do something after that? Uh, bishop takes h6 is not possible because your knight will be on g5 once you're blocking. So it's not going there. So it looks like you cannot, this class still cannot prove that I'm an imposter. Because you have not found the tactic that I missed. I should say I missed. I didn't kind of spot right away. Anything. I'll give you a small hint. Loose pieces. Nev and Vishrut got it. I like it. I like it. Good job. Good job. Now I'm going to play the first move because I, I may got it. Good. The first move is of course d5 because you attack the knight. Now the second move will be very easy. I don't have a lot of good squares. I can go to b8 or d8. So let's say I go to b8. And I'm going to ask this as a question. I want every one of you to get this right. I think it's doable. It's easy. I give you 60 seconds and only one attempt. What do you think white should play here? Easy stuff. Oh, actually, I realized you have two moves. <laughs> oh, my bad. I mean, my bad. I played the most. <laughs> I guess... There is still one. If you get it in two attempts, it's okay. I gave only one attempt. My bad. It's funny that everyone's going for the other move. Very interesting. I would not choose that move first. I'm curious to see if there is anyone. Okay, Vishruth at least played the other move. Loose pieces. Loose pieces can be picked up. Don't forget that. Last 10 seconds. Akhil, that's close enough, yeah? That works. That's the second answer. Uh, what is LPDO? I have no idea. You have to help me understand, Ame. Oh, loose pieces drop off. Okay. <laughs> I said loose pieces drop off, but I had no idea about the aberrations and stuff. <laughs> okay. 
Well, yes, loose pieces drop off. We have the bishop on a5 that's going to drop off, and that's queen a4 check. Funny thing is, most of you played queen b5. I mean, there is a possible block. I, I mean, it's not really going to make any difference. I'm going to take the bishop. It's just that naturally, I tend to play queen a4 more than the queen b5 because there is there's always a tempo on queen b5. But it looks like most of you wanted to go queen b5. In this case, it shouldn't make much of a difference. So the funny thing is I get to this position. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to check. So I'm like, okay. So the reason why this queen has to go to d7 is I have to keep an eye on, eye on this diagonal. So if d5 is played, knight moves out, this check is not possible. And bishop b5, always you can play c6. Right? So I was sitting there thinking, oh, you know what? I'll check on queen e7. And the whole chat is going, it's d5, it's d5, it's d5. I'm like, wait, I'm going to check chess base. I'm going to look at the reference database and I'm going to look at all the games played and all, all of that stuff. And then they'd be glad that I was an imposter because I didn't know this tactic <laughs> because we had that deal um, on tactics. Um, anyways, so the point is, these are very um, simple tactics that you have to keep in mind, like loose pieces drop off. This bishop does not look like it's in danger, but it's always in the danger of the back of my head, right? because there is always this check that can pick up that bishop. As long as this king is on e8, I'm going to watch for this. If the king goes to g8 by castling, I will always watch out for an idea for queen d5 check and take that bishop. It should always be running in the back of your head. And to do that, you have to do a lot of tactics, right? Okay, so how about um, we have a few more minutes. I'm probably going to try to show you a couple of um, positions. Like I said, we, I can show you some examples from the nationals and you guys can all kind of guess what good and bad moves happen in the game. So when I talk about nationals, this is actually a game from um, elementary nationals in US and uh, mostly play, play, played by players under 1000. So which would be in your rating group, yeah? So first, let's see, what do you think uh, white should play here? Let's see what move comes to your mind for white. Let, I want to find out who are the aggressive ones. Maybe I'll ask a question. What aggressive move are you thinking about here? Lunch is very aggressive. <laughs> Vinod, good. Okay, good. Vineet, Ariman, good. Shani. It's not even like necessarily the best move. I just want to know what you would play here that could be a very aggressive idea. I mean, these kind of moves you should see very quickly because they are very threatening to your opponent. Okay, time is up. Okay, so I want to clarify something very, very much here, yeah? so. Bishop h6 is the move that was given. That's what is also what I gave as the answer. And it's the most aggressive move, you know, because you're threatening checkmate. I really like a move like bishop h6 because you're threatening checkmate. Now, this is one of the most common checkmates called queen and helper. And I want you to always be aware of this. The reason I think this is the most deadly checkmate is like when the game is completely even, the only way you will mostly lose is because of a queen and helper checkmate like this. Because look at this game. Black is completely even. Black has all the pieces. There are two minor pieces. White has two minor pieces. They have all the pawns on the board. It's not like white is outplaying black or anything like that. And suddenly white plays bishop to h6, threatening mate. What is a queen and helper checkmate? Very simple. You take your queen, get it very close to your opponent's king, and you find a helper. The reason is once a queen gets close to the king, it takes away all the escape squares. So only thing the queen really needs is someone to support it. So the queen and helper checkmate, or I think uh, one of my friend uh, coach used to call it the kiss of death. The queen gets right next to the king and it's called the kiss of death. 
So anyway, so Bishop H6 is nice, but yes, there is enough moves for black to actually save this. Black can simply play Bishop F6 here and save the checkmate. Yeah, and eventually move the king out of the way. The whole reason I cannot take your bishop is because I am stuck in a pin. The queen will go, uh, I mean, the queen is pinning the pawn to the king. So typically black can go here and go here, yeah? So what do you think black did here in the game? What do you guys think black did here? Knight E5, G6. Well, G6 drops the rook, but at least saves checkmate. How many of you think black actually saved checkmate? Let's see who's very positive about the player who played black. I don't think so, says much. <laughs> Pavitra is still hopeful. She said black played bishop f6. Prahlad says bishop f6. Well, black did not save checkmate, unfortunately, guys. Black played knight to b4. It's like activate the knight, attack the pawn, go after the rook. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Well, not right now, because white played queen g7 and game over. So again, this is a good example of offense and defense. You can't simply say, oh, I'm running in. I'm going to go after my own plans. I'm going to go after my opponent's pawns and stuff like that when your opponent is actually threatening checkmate on you, right? Um, so yeah, the game ended very quickly. Let's show, I'll show you one more. Okay. Um, this was a great national here, right? Yeah. So, and most players were rated under 1,000. So there were mistakes and blunders, yes. So most situations, what happens is it works very well. Um, oh, Akil is quick to pounce on Queen G7. It's black to play Akil. I'm not going to give you that easy a puzzle. <laughs> I know it'll be easy, but not that easy. Okay. It is black to play. What are the options for black? I want you to give me some candidate moves. We didn't talk about candidate moves. Let's see if we can do candidate moves. Knight f6 is a candidate move. What else? Queen f6 is a candidate move. What else? Rook f7 seems too defensive. I wouldn't do that. I mean, I know I'm threat stopping checkmate. e5 is precisely thinking about offense and not defense. It's like e5, let's go. I found the best tactic in the world. Discovered attack. That is a skewer. That's actually cool. If you did a discovery attack, that's a skewer. Except I checkmated you. So <laughs> it doesn't work. Knight f2 is a fork that is just hanging the knight. Cannot do that. Pavitra thinks that queen should take the pawn. By the way, I have three options. Knight f6, queen f6, rook f6. I have three options. I mean, why do I need to defend checkmate when I can simply take the pawn? This is only a checkmate as long as this pawn stays here. And that pawn is for me to capture. So why would I not capture it, right? So you have a one in three chance to get this right. Let's see who can get this. One in three chance to get the answer right. What do you think Black's best move is? But only one shot though. I'm not giving you more than one shot. I see some of you have gotten it. Good job. We're down to the last 10 seconds. Okay. That's pretty good. Am I? That's exactly precise, yeah? The reason why queen f6 makes a lot more sense than anything else is simply because I'm threatening mate. The same kind of checkmate we talked about. I think the position is kind of even, but black is way ahead in development. All black pieces are out. Look at white sleeping, yeah? And white, black is threatening some kind of checkmate with queen f2 and queen e1 or queen f2 and queen f1, black knight checkmate, yeah? 
Not on G2. How do I checkmate on G2, Akhil? I don't see any checkmate on G2. I'll play queen F2. Oh, you mean you probably meant F2. Yeah. Queen F2 and then queen E1 is made. Yeah. So what do you guys think? Did white stop checkmate? You guys think white stop checkmate? Nope. <laughs> nope. Well, white was thinking about this. Like, you know what? If I play queen F2, the king h1. I mean, if black plays queen f2, king h1, queen f1, bishop f1, rook f1, it's like a lot of moves. That's three moves for a checkmate. So white decided to play bishop takes e4 and allow checkmate in one move. Queen f3 and game over. <laughs> but Amai, you did have a good move. I would have definitely liked a move like rook f3. That would have saved the game. Uh, but okay. You can, if you keep thinking about what you're winning and forget about what you're losing, these things might happen. Okay, so this is a good place for us to wrap up the chess part of it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. The whole group, Freshers group, we plan to do two things. One, of course, is we talk to, um, you know, all the, we talk about these model games, Paul Morphy, you'll probably see a lot of him, Steinitz or all the classics where development, tempo, attacking were all kind of important. Uh, we will do a lot of puzzles and we'll play a lot of games. So at your level, if you want to get better at chess, I will strongly recommend that you keep playing and you keep doing worksheets or puzzles. Those two are going to be like the number one way to get better. And of course, there are you have to study your openings. You have to start doing slow things like studying end games and like kind of set the ground uh, work for you know getting better and better. But the main problem, as you can see in these games too, is that when you go to a game and if you can definitely stop checkmate, you can definitely find good defense and you can definitely find threats, which wins the game. Once you get to that point, you will be in good shape. And we will be doing all of that in our freshers group in Proches training. And uh, so, yeah, today we also have a sale going on today. If anyone signs up today, it's actually 25% off. So if you want, if you're interested, if you like the class, you can definitely sign up today. Um, Manj, do we have a code for that? I think you can put it in chat if you have a specific code. You can go to our website at Proches Training. Sure about the twenty-five percent thing. I can check in. I can check sure. In. Or we can just email the email out. Now I know yeah. you guys uh, are registered through the form, so we have your email. So what we'll do is after the class, we'll send out an email with the code and how to register. Um, my rating is okay. So Prahlad, if your rating is that high, definitely not Freshers Group. You probably belong to someone like Group 2 or Group 3. Um, and uh, yeah, this, this won't help so much. Of course, at that level, you have to see very clearly what your specific problems are and take care of that. Sriram, I would say then you also do not probably belong to this group. I mean, you guys have to think about your um, leeches ratings too. I'll tell you, if you are rating um, in leeches like 1300 or above, you probably don't want to be in Freshers Group it won't fit fit very well for you. I mean, like, it's okay. You can learn some, but I would say it's better to do, um, you know, some of the higher groups in process training. So you can see what it is, yeah? And uh, we always, of course, move students from one group to another, depending on how they do. So if you, if you join one of the groups and you want to move, you can always do that. Yes, you can join group one uh, from now, Shiram. That's very much possible, yeah. If you're around 1600 in Lee Chess or in um, chess.com, I would say start with group one. Typically, 1000 to 1400 in USCF for FIDE, we consider it for group one. 1600 Lee Chess would, or chess.com would kind of fall under that. Um, you might be in group one or group two, but I would recommend joining group one unless you have a FIDE or USCF that's over 1400 or 1300. Um, you can always see for a um, yeah, if you're unrated and if you have a very high leeches, then you can definitely try group two. If you have 2200 leeches, then you should definitely be at least group two. Yeah. Uh, Akhil, you can do these. Um, so the model games, if you are about 1500, I would say group one makes a lot more sense for you, Akhil. And, uh, you know, we do model games there too. It's not that the content is going to be drastically different, it's just the questions will be a little bit more challenging. Um, well, in this class, uh, it's kind of a model where we start, like, for example, 
one move checkmates, I think it's still easy, but sometimes you might do it. Um, but typically maybe two move checkmates is still okay in this group. Um, so it's not very straightforward. So what I would recommend is try it and see how you like and see how you're being challenged. And the deal is this, I'll give you a simple kind of uh, a tumble. That is, if you're answering every question, let's say in five or 10 seconds, and you're getting, let's say 70 or 80% of them right, then you are not being challenged enough. Then you can bring it up to us and we'll move you to the next level. You have to, if to keep improving, you have to be challenged. So that's the rule of thumb we always use, right? Um, even if you don't have a rating, other things, if you can show that, uh, of course, you're, you're really, really solving these things and you're not being challenged and you're not really thinking too much, right? The questions I asked should make you think about a few options. You should get some wrong and you, you that's the learning process. If you're going through that, then you're in the right place. You, I ask you a question, you look at it, you, you have the answer and you put it in, you're done. You're probably not in this group. You're probably one group about this. All right, so um, more questions, you can email us. Um, so Sriram, you can sign up right now because we have a sale going on, 20% uh, off for monthly and annual members. I know monthly is not that much because you just get it for the first month. Uh, annual is annual is like you get a good discount, 20% off for the whole year. Uh, but, you know, depending on what you guys want to do, but you can definitely sign up right now if, you, if you're interested. And um, we prorate the charges anyways. Um, oh, sorry. I think it's 25%. Oh, wait, 25% is Freshers Group. If you're joining any other group, it's 20%. Yeah. So that's great, Rola. There's a lot of content online too. Of course, that's one of the good things that's happened during the pandemic. Lucky for chess is that we got more content. We have lots of channels. We have lots of content. If you're reading and studying on your own, fantastic. You should definitely do that. And you should definitely continue to do that. Proches is not meant to really... Um, you know, take away any of the existing work you're doing. It's meant to add more and guide you more, right? I mean, I grew up studying chess and working with coaches. The idea is there's a lot of content. There's a lot of things going on. You need some guidance and coaches brings a lot of coaches and you can ask different questions. You can see different perspectives. And that's, that's the value we add. All right, fantastic. Thank you everyone for coming in today. We'll email you um, the details um, of how you can register if you're interested. Hope you had fun. Bye.